Well, welcome back. We've got another great night of solving fractional equations, but this time we're going to have irrational or complex solutions. So, remember, rational mean it came out to be a nice number you've been familiar with, okay, and that's what we've practiced the past couple days. Irrational solutions are most likely going to have some sort of radical in them. For example, 4 plus or minus radical 2, something to that effect. Complex solutions are going to end up in that a plus bi form. I guess my point is, anytime you see radical or a plus bi form, that's another indication that you're going to need to use quadratic formula. So you're going to see that a lot tonight, where we need to solve with the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and talk about some of our rules. So let's just nicely state these in our notebook. Um, we should be hopefully familiar with most of them. We'll make a little bullet points here. Factor any denominators. State the LCD. State what makes the fraction undefined. Multiply by the LCD. And the most important word here is to clear the fraction. We don't want to see the fraction in the end. And then solve. And of course, reject any roots that you need to. So let's dive into question one. For all values of, solve for all values of x to the nearest tenth. Now this is what I want you to make sure you note in your book here, nearest tenth. That's the, the exam's giveaway to say you are going to have to use quadratic formula. Okay, notice they're never going to come out and say it. They're going to drop hints. Nearest tenth or radical form is quadratic formula. So I'm going to put this first fraction over one and then just ask myself, uh, what is my least common denominator? Okay, remember I need one of every type of thing I see. I need the monomial x and I need the binomial x plus 3. Okay, and then lastly, I just want to state what x cannot be before I get started. x cannot equal 0 if I get it, and x cannot equal negative 3 if I get it. Alright, so let's take that term we have, and we're going to multiply everybody by the LCD. So I'm going to say x times x plus 3 for this guy, um, and then I'm going to have a plus sign, my x times x plus 3, and I'm going to multiply that by the 1 over x plus 3. equals x times x plus 3, and I'm going to multiply that by just basically the 3 over 1. Okay, so everybody gets the x, x plus 3, and the whole idea is, again, that we clear the fraction. So if we continue here, I can clear the x's, so there's no fraction left, and I basically have x plus 3 times 1, which is just x plus 3. Carry that plus sign down. I can clear the x plus 3's, and I basically have x times 1, which is just x, now, this one's a little uglier to multiply. Don't let it rattle you at all. Just do it one at a time. The first thing I see is x times x plus 3. So let's do that first, just underneath. That's x squared plus 3x. Okay, now cross them off. You've used those two. Now you take what you have and you multiply that by 3. So that gets me 3x squared plus 9x. Okay, notice I didn't multiply everybody all at once and get all jumbled up. Just take them one at a time. Do the first two, write it down, and then multiply by the third. All right, I got to set this puppy equal to zero. Uh, so let's say I've got 3x squared. I've got 1x plus 1x is a total of 2x. And if I bring those 2x's to the other side, that's going to get me a positive 7x. And I got to bring that 3 over, so I get a minus 3. Now, I'm not going to waste my time factoring, remember, because they told me it had to be simplest, um, oops, I'm sorry, to the nearest tenth. So let's go straight to quadratic. Um, I've got my a equals 3, my b equals 7, and my c equals negative 3. So I'm going to say x equals negative b, so negative 7, plus or minus the square root, 7 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 3, divided by 2a, so divided by 6. All right, so I'm going to grab my calculator. Now remember, you're not typing that radical in, just the junk underneath the radical. All right, so get her typed in your calculator nice and neat. And I think I get 85 when I do that out. Okay, now at this point, I know what you want to do. I know you want to break the radical down. But notice it didn't say simplest radical form. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to type this carefully in my calculator. And I have to type it in twice because, remember, there are two answers. I get x equals negative 7 plus radical 85 divided by 6. 
and x equals negative 7 minus radical 85 divided by 6. Okay, now, this might sound redundant, and I, if you have that upgraded calculator, you know what I'm talking about. You can hit your alpha y equals, and that will pull up that numerator denominator, the first thing in there. And you can just type this in. If you have the old TI-83 calculator, all right, you're going to have to type the top in, negative 7 plus radical 85 in parentheses, then divided by the bottom in parentheses. So I took a quick picture of what mine looked like on my screen, um, and I tried to do it both ways, kind of with the new upgraded version. You have this old school calculator, you got to write it like that. And I've got my two answers, and I believe it said nearest hundredth, so I've got two answers like we said. I'm sorry, nearest tenth. I get x equals 0.4 to the nearest tenth, and x equals negative 2.7 to the nearest tenth. So same type of question we've talked about, it's just going to be a little uglier with the type of roots we get. All right, moving on, question two. Solve for x and express your answer in simplest radical form. So again, they're not coming out and saying, Mrs. Hill, use quadratic formula. They're going to give you hints, and their hint is radical form. All right, so let's just make a note that radical form is meaning use quadratic formula. All right, but I first got to set her up the same way. So let's talk about what x cannot be. Here, I want to make sure I reject x cannot equal 0, and here, x cannot equal negative 1. All right, and if it helps, you can put that 7 over 1, and let's go get our least common denominator. I would say the least common denominator, I need one of everybody. I need the monomial x and the binomial x plus 1. All right, so I'm multiplying every term I see by that term. So I'm going to say x times x plus 1, and I'm going to multiply first by the 4 over x. Okay, now don't fall for the bear trap. There's that first one. That minus sign there, that gets us every time. Turn that minus 2a plus, and you'll just have to make that 3a negative. So I'm going to say x times x plus 1, and I'm multiplying by negative 3 over x plus 1 equals, I have that x times x plus 1, and I'm just going to multiply by 7. If it makes you feel better, you can say 7 over 1. All right. We've done the hard part. Now remember, our goal is to clear the fraction. So I'm going to clear the x and the x, and I'm just going to carefully distribute on top. So I get 4x plus 4. Here I'm going to clear the x plus 1s, and if I multiply what's left, I get a negative 3x. Okay, now don't get rattled again. Don't fall for this. Just take the first two and multiply nicely. So that's going to get me x squared plus x. All right, now cross them off. You're done with those two. Now you have to multiply by 7. So that's 7x squared plus 7x. All right, let's set this baby equal to 0. So I've got 7x squared. Let's see, 4x minus 3x just gets me an x over here. And if I subtract that over, I get a plus 6x and a minus 4. Now remember, they told us radical form, so I'm jumping straight to quadratic formula now. So my a is 7 my b is 6, and my c is negative 4. So I'm going to get x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root 6 squared minus 4 times 7 times negative 4 divided by 2a, so divided by 14. Okay, so let's keep chugging here. I get x equals negative 6 plus or minus. All right, now again, grab your calculator, but don't type the radical in. And hopefully we get the same thing. I end up with a 148. Now, I do have to take my time on this one because it said simplest radical form. I need to break this bear down here. And I'm looking for somebody that's a perfect square and somebody that's not. And let's see, I'm going to start with, I'm thinking 4 times something. I'm going to go with 4 times 37. And remember, if you get stuck, just take this number and start dividing by perfect squares until you get something that works. All right, so I get x equals negative 6 plus or minus. The 4 turns into the number 2, radical 37, all over 14. And it does say simplest form, so I should be able to pull out a nice GCF at this point. I can pull out a 2, and I'm left with negative 3 plus or minus radical 37 all over 14. And I can reduce this 2 and 14 to a 7. So there we have it. We have two answers. 
negative 3 plus radical 37 over 7, and negative 3 minus radical 37 over 7. And there we've got it, our fractional equation in simplest radical form. All right, question 3. Solve the equation uh, x plus 8 over 5 plus x plus 5 over x equals 1 and express the roots in simplest a plus bi form. All right, so get that equation on your paper and get this simplest a plus bi form on there. Again, they're not going to be as blunt to say use quadratic formula. They're going to give you these hints. And a plus bi form is another hint that you need quadratic formula. All right, so let's talk about two things first. What makes this fraction undefined? So check out those denominators. I only have one variable, so I just can say x cannot equal 0 here. Okay. And secondly, what is the least common denominator? Remember, you need one of all the denominators. Well, I have the monomial 5 and the monomial x. So that's what I'm going to go with. 5x is my least common denominator. So remember, I'm taking 5x times each term. Why don't you pause it, get your equation set up, and see if you can clear the fractions. Then come back and check. Well, hopefully, welcome back. Yours looks like mine. Notice I put that 5x in front of every term, and I cleared my fractions. That was the whole point. As I clean this equation up, I'm going to get x squared. I have 8x plus 5x, and I'm going to subtract the 5x over, so that leaves me plus 8x plus 25. Now again, the hint they gave me was a plus bi form, so I'm not going to waste my time trying to factor and, and seeing that it doesn't work. I know it doesn't work. I'm going to say my a is 1, my b is 8, and my c is 25. All right, let's set her up. x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 25 divided by 2a. All right, now... Remember, a plus bi form means I should get a negative where? Well, you've probably guessed it or know it. It should be a negative under that radical. Let's verify we get a negative number there. And when I type that in my calculator, of course, not the radical, I get a 36 underneath. So let's see, that's x equals negative 8. Now what happens to be really nice about that is I know the square root of 36. That turns into a 6, and the negative, of course, turns into the i, all over 2. And I can clean that up slightly more. I can pull out the GCF of 2, and I get negative 4 plus or minus 3i divided by 2. Those 2s cancel, and negative 4 plus or minus 3i. Beautiful. Well, believe it or not, we've got one question left. And again, I'm going to encourage you to try it on your own. I'll talk uh, for a few seconds and then pause it and uh, make the magic happen. So again, it says express the roots in simplest a plus bi form. Okay, so again, let's just make a mental note. That's quadratic formula. And let's see, we only have one fraction. So you can, again, put those over one if that makes you feel better. And I'm going to say x cannot equal zero. All right, that, of course, makes that fraction undefined. And now my LCD, I think, is extremely obvious. What is your only denominator to worry about? Just the monomial x. So I'm going to multiply every term by x. So again, at this point, I think we're far into the game where you can pause it. Um, don't cheat yourself there and see what you get. Good luck. And uh, turn me back on when you're ready. All right, well, I'm hoping that you got the same equation I did. Um, I've got it written out. I've canceled. I got 3 plus x squared equals 2x. Brought that 2x over. Set it equal to 0. Got my quadratic formula cooking. I plugged everybody in real nicely. Um, I ended up with a negative 8 under the radical. So I broke that down as to 4, 2, and negative 1. That left me with 2 plus or minus 2i, radical 2 over 2. Now, don't forget to pull out that GCF. And I can tell you right now, the biggest mistake we see every year is that people forget to put a 1 there. Remember, when you divide the 2 out, it doesn't disappear into thin air. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I get a total of 1 plus or minus i radical 2 in the end. Well, that does it for us tonight. Again, don't be shy. If you've got questions, we're here in the morning and we're here after school. Come for some help. Have a great night.